I want to take you back to the beginning, to the beginning of when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the first human being. And the reason I want to go back to that point when Allah first created the first human being, I want to share with you an awareness of what the plot and the plan of the enemies of the human beings, the enemies of morals, the enemies of good, what they planned from that time until today and will stay going till the hereafter. Iblis first of all was a jinn and he had a position among the ranks of the angels. He actually worked among the angels literally, but he wasn't an angel. He was a jinn made of fire. The angels are made of light. He had a special rank. He was God fearing. He was devout. He was a worshiper, wallahi. And he believed in the oneness of God and his might and power and everything. And he turned to him. He was a righteous servant of God in every meaning of the word. However, something inside of his heart, when we say heart, we don't mean literally the organ that's pumping blood. When we say heart in Arabic, we mean the mind, something here, in here, something inside. If you change hearts, literally, you're not going to change that. that. That stays with you, the mind, something in here. Iblis had something in here, something that wasn't right. And Allah, He doesn't put that in you. But Allah gives you the opportunity, the, the circumstances to have it if you want to, depending on how you choose. This is the will of God. His knowledge is unbelievable. Is, is, uh, we cannot explain it. So Iblis, Allah tested Iblis. It was a test and there were many other plans as well to this test. At the same time, the test of Iblis is also, was also going to be a test for Adam السلام, our father. And the test of Adam was also going to be a test for us. So Allah said to his angels one day, Inni khalikum basharam min teen. This is a test to the angels. He wanted to teach the angels something and wanted to teach us something by telling them this. What is it? He said to them, Oh my angels, I am about to create a creation, a being made of clay. Now the angels know that there are angels made of light and Allah had created the jinns made of fire. Allah only knows what else he has created before us. We don't know. We haven't been informed. But now the angels are told that a creature is going to be created from clay. Now the angels had known the jinns before what they had done. They shed blood and corrupted on earth. This earth was here before us. And the jinns lived here and they still do. And they corrupted and shed blood. So Allah sent the angels down and they actually had a battle. And they forced them out into the islands of the world. That's where their headquarters are. This is knowledge which Allah told us about. So the angels replied, they said, O oh, our Lord, are you going to create a creature on earth that will shed blood again and corrupt again when we glorify your name and your and praise? They're not questioning, but they're asking to seek knowledge the confused. The jinns, look what they did. We don't understand the reason behind creating another creation when they're going to shed blood and corrupt. God did not explain it to them because they will not understand until they see. So all he said was this. He said, I know that which you just do not know. So Allah created Adam alayhi salam. Allah took dust from the earth. And that dust was taken from different parts of the earth. And you and I know that the soil on the earth is different colors. You have red, you have slightly lighter color, you have a darker color, you have different shades of brown and so on. So there were different shades and different colors. And he took these from different parts of the globe, from the valleys, from the mountaintops, from the sandy regions, from the rocky regions and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it all together. This is why in mankind, Nowadays, we use, the, we use the word genes, the genes within man. What do we understand? If something is in your genes, there is a likelihood that it will be passed on to your children, hereditary. So Adam والسلام, was created from different types, different colors and different qualities. So from his progeny, there are different colors. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about how he created this man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first had this dust and then he added water to it. It became soil and then he shaped it up. It became clay and he left it. He left it for a while. Now, what was the size of Adam alayhi salatu was salam? Very interestingly, the narration says, Situna dhira'an, 60 feet. And the hadith says, Khalaq Allahu Adam ala suratihi. Allah created Adam upon his image. Now, what is meant by this? When me and you were born, how were we created? A little seed began to multiply. And thereafter, the form was given slowly but surely. But with Adam alayhi salam, it was different. Allah created him on his image from day one, which means he was already big. He already had size. He already had eyes. That is the meaning of creation in his image, not the image of Allah. But Adam was created in the image of Adam wholly in those meters. He was already an adult when he was created. When Allah created Adam alayhi salam, Iblis had heard the angels what they had asked and everybody's talking about it and Iblis he's, he's starting to think here what is so special about this creature which God had created curiosity and at the same time something began to develop in his heart a form of jealousy why here is Iblis among the rank of the angels wanting to please his Lord loves his Lord wants to please him and now something had come up which he had never anticipated, never thought of, and suddenly he feels something strange coming out. He could have controlled it, but he let it consume him. It was the jealousy. Jealousy began. So he went to look at this creature and he saw it. It didn't look too impressive to him. It was made of clay, it's dark. It was dark in color because there was no soul in it. It was just clay. He tapped it and he kicked it. And it made a ringing sound. And he was able to, th to flow through it. Because he's created from a less denser material, which is f flames of fire, he was able to flow through this body. And he found, as in the hadith, he found that we were hollow. So he thought, you are a weak creature. That's what he thought. As time went, Allah left the body of Adam alayhi salam like that. And every time Iblis looked at it, he felt fear a bit. Looking at a dead body is quite frightening, isn't it? Well, imagine seeing something like that. Iblis saw it and he was frightened. But at the same time, he's trying to beat his fear and say, I'm better than you. You're not going to be better than me. Do whatever you want. He's not going to be better than me. I'm going to be better than him. What's so special about him? I will always be God's favorite. And, eat, and I'm going to do everything about it to be that way. It's like that. Allah left him there until that jealousy developed more and more and more. And now it turned into prou proudiness, arrogance. Jealousy turned into proudiness. Allah created Adam, put his soul into him. He, he blew the ruh or the soul into Adam alayhi salatu was salam. Very interestingly, it started from the top, from the head. So the most honored organ that we have is the brain. That is what distinguishes us from the rest of creatures. We have a brain. Allah gave it life first before everything else. Then as the soul came, meaning as the life began to come, everything was turning into flesh and blood from soil. It was becoming flesh and blood and the brain came alive. Then the eyes came alive and Adam alayhi salatu was salam suddenly opened his eyes. Imagine what must have happened. An adult opening his eyes, granted full knowledge. Allah says in the Quran, we taught Adam alayhi salam the names of everything. So we brought everything that was in creation and we told him this is a tree, this is a stone, this is a mountain, so on. So he was already taught. He was not like us when you're born and then you slowly learn and you learn to say Allah and then you learn to say something else and then you learn to say daddy and mommy. No, it was not like that with Adam alayhi salatu was salam. He already knew the words and the names of everything. So as his eyes opened, he saw the fruits of Jannah. So he's stretching out, but life had not yet come onto his, his legs. So he couldn't get there. And this is why the Quran says, man was always in a rush, always making haste. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he created Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he instructed the angels to prostrate. Story goes on. And he brought Adam alayhi salam before the angels. 
He said, and when your Lord brought Adam alayhi salam before the angels, he said to them, prostrate to Adam. Bow down to him on the ground, to Adam alayhi salam. فَسَجَدُوا The angels all obeyed. There's a letter there. The letter before the word sajadu, which means they prostrated. There's a letter. It says fa fa sajadu. Fa sajadu means they immediately prostrated, no hesitation. Then Allah says illa iblis, except for iblis, he didn't prostrate. Then Allah further explains why Abba, he chose to re to refuse. He actually objected. He refused. So it was a conscious refusal. So you don't think that he couldn't. He could. But he consciously refused. The reason he refused is because he allowed himself to be proud. Proud as in not happy, arrogant. And that resulted in him becoming among the disbelievers. He hid the truth. Kafir, the, literally the word kafir means to hide the truth deep and to cover it up. That's what kafir means. Knowing the truth, hiding it, denying it. Denial of the truth, knowing it. Iblis explains. Allah says, What prevented you, O Iblis, to prostrate to one who I have created with my own hands? Allah created him directly. What did Iblis respond? I am better than him. I am better than him. I am better than him. Better than him. Why? Why? You made me, you made me out of fire. You made him out of clay. I'm from fire. He's from, he's from clay. This was the first sin being committed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first sin. He refused out of arrogance. I am much better than him. You made him from dust and you made me from fire. How can I prostrate to him? He must prostrate to me. Who is he? Allah then said to him, Okay, very well. Are you adamant about your decision? He said, I am adamant. Allah gave him chances. He continued. Then Allah finally said to him, I created him and I am the one who commanded you. You have disobeyed me outright and arrogantly. This is Iblis's reply. وَعِزَّتِكَ وَجَلَالِكَ he swore an oath by God's honor and his might. He knows God better than most people of today and of the past. In fact, maybe more than anyone who's existed except for the prophets. He knows Allah very well. By your might and by your power, I will lead them all astray. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He swears by Allah's honor and might, acknowledging his might and honor. And then he tells him, what you've done, I'm going to wreck it. It's like saying, I believe you. You are more powerful than me and you are mighty and you can do anything you want. I know that. But you know what you've done? I'm going to wreck it. Allah said, okay, very well. Climb on top of any one of them that you are able to. Stafziz is an Arabic word used for climbing on a horse and steering it. And climb on top of the servants who want to be horses for you. And try to delude them away with your voice. What's shaitan's voice? I'll leave it up to you to analyze what is shaitan's voice, do you think? Since you can't hear him, what is his voice there for? And then he said, and try to delude them away by showing them materialism, materialistic things. Let them be involved in materialistic things. Their cars and their homes and their clothes and their money and their this and their, their desires. And sharikhum, associate with them, like be a part, be a partner with their children, use their children against them. And with their money, use their money against them. Wa'idhum, and, and give them false hopes or false promises. And also, in another verse, make them afraid. Make them afraid of poverty, that in the future they're gonna get poor. So then they'll resort to haram, they'll resort to theft or to uh, indecent types of jo haram jobs to earn their money or to indecent earnings, improper earnings. Make them afraid that you're going to get poor. You're going to lose out. You're going to be out on the street. So go and get haram. Do that. Allah is telling the shaitan to do that. Allah says, but the shaitan never promises anyone except deception. 
He does not mean anything he says. He knows you better than yourself. And he works step by step. He said, Then, oh my Lord, keep me alive until the day they are resurrected. Give me time. Allah says, We will give you time, but not what you're asking. Not until the day of resurrection. You want to escape death? No. We will give you time until the end of the world. When the hour goes, you will die with them. That's your time. Then Allah said to him, but wait. Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhum sultan. My true servants, you will not have power over them. That's the only thing. Then the Iblis replied, he said, okay. I will lead them all astray. Illa ibadaka minhumul mukhlasin. Except your servants among them who are sincere. Those are the only types of people, my brothers and sisters, whom Iblis and the Shayateen have absolutely no power over. The ones whose hearts are absolutely sincere. There's no hypocrisy in it. Repent to Allah when they do wrong. They feel regret when they've done wrong. They blame themselves when they've gone astray. And they complain to Allah. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين جزاكم الله خير الله يبارك والسلام عليكم